Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, and today we're going to begin the first stage of LLC preparation, getting a business address and phone number. Do not skip th these steps. This is one of the biggest issues why many people will not be successful with putting together their personal credit and business credit. I'm going to cover both in this series of webinars so that you can get the best benefit because upper level business credit is going to be hinged upon your ability to repay first and foremost and your personal credit score. This is the big boogaboo and no one talks about this verification. The path to success is a firm foundation. Let me explain what verification is and what it's not. If you've ever had a derogatory on your credit report and then you go through the process of challenging it, what many of these credit card companies, loan, com loan companies, um, car dealerships, anything, they'll do a verification. You know what that verification means? They verify your address. That's it. No one calls your job. No one calls you. No one actually looks at it. They do a quick verification of your address. If the address matches, you're verified and they're not going to challenge that again. In this webinar, I'm going to give you some steps on how to get around that and how to do it appropriately. And it's very important that you do this stuff in order. Most background checks have one thing in common, address verification. This is for credit. This is also for your TSA number. This is for your concealed carry permit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something to prove what I'm doing. This is my concealed carry permit. And you see that address. This is a UPS box. I've had this UPS box nine years now. I have my car registration. I have my concealed carry permit. I have my driver's license and I have my TSA number. All my applications I filled out using this address. And it's a UPS box. That's how important verification is. If all of your verification stuff matches up, you get approved. My TSA number took me two days to get. I hear that like, you know, because they went in and said, oh, this address is on file for a long time. Oh, these credit cards. Oh, this, this, this. Oh, because they'll carry all of this stuff lines up like ducks in a row. When you start to have problems is if you are not a fully fledged adult and you still getting credit card statements at your mom and dad's house, but you live in Colorado or you're in be an adult handle your own official business. This is one of the reasons so many people have problems is because they go for that comfort of, well, my mom will get my mail for me. Now, if that's going to be your permanent address, that's cool. But I'm telling you that it creates issues if everything is not congruent. Now, that's my permanent address. You need to have an address that you can keep a long time. Typically, to see me at this end, it takes about two years. Now, you can start using it immediately once you follow all the steps that are into this webinar. But it is very important. I learned this years and years ago. There was this old blog, and this guy was talking about verification. The, the website wasn't getting a lot of hits, but this guy used to work for Equifax. He used to work for TransUnion Experian. And he just went on and on and on how this address verification thing is so important because when someone goes ahead and goes to the credit bureau and looks at your credit file it's there's no human beings in pro you know there's no manual underwriting it's score driven score driven is if you have a score that's 680 and then internally they say everyone that has 676 and above it'll be approved that's score driven there's nobody looking at this. So they have a set of verification criteria. They have algorithms. They've tested this. So if your address matches and your score is this, and there's a few other things, you get the credit card. And if you don't have these things, you don't get the credit card. Now, this is another thing that many people do not really pay attention to. You need a permanent phone number. Now, if you've been around the internet for a while, you know of Grand Central Station. I've had that number 
for my personal business. I've got a grand session number. They were bought out by Google. Now, here's the thing that you should know about phone numbers. You ever get a call from someone and it could tell you what phone they're using or you set up something. It's like, oh, this is a Verizon phone. Oh, this is a Sprint phone. Oh, this is an AT&T phone. Well, whenever these numbers are issued out, there is a master list of all of these numbers. That's how they know. These numbers were already pre-populated and they were just waiting to be handed out. And that's why you see with the lower carriers that a lot of recycling a number. So you got to be careful with this permanent number. You can use a Google voice. It'll take time. But if someone verifies it, it's going to be like, hey, that's a Google voice number. I recommend getting a new cell phone and a new number. Do not use your current number. Uh, one of the reasons that I charge so much for Hustle Campus to get people of means because the quick and easy thing is I'll just use my current phone number. No. In a little while, I'm going to explain why that's a bad idea. So you need a number. This is super critical to your success. I mean, I can't overestimate just how important this is. You can use a UPS store if you don't have some permanent address and you can use a phone for that number. And let's just get to the nitty gritty. Never use this address or a number for anything other than business. We live in a world where there are these huge databases and with the ability of big data, it doesn't take long for anything to match up or to do a cross reference checks. Things that used to take weeks are done in nanoseconds. So this address and number you do not put on down on credit applications unless you know that they asked for it. It's business only, nothing else. Do not use it for posting um, stuff online. Do not, do not put this number anywhere that is not business related. Now, here's something that you should know. Do not download any social media apps on your business phone ever. None. Keep that business phone. You can have that on your personal phone. Do not. All of these social media apps, when you download them and accept the terms of service, you give them the permission to harvest all of the data on your phone. So what happens is you get your new business number, which is all clean, right? Then you go ahead and download an app. Then that app harvests your phone. It gets that number and it goes in this database somewhere. And over time, every app that you download, you not only do you get the database of your number, they get GPS locations. Oh yeah, yes, they get the GPS locations. So like say that you apply for a big loan and then they go ahead and do this verification. And it's like, wait a minute, this person is in Washington, but all of their GPS activity is in New York. Yes, this is real. This is what they're doing. And it's good in some areas to prevent fraud. But since you know what's going to happen, you do not want to have your business phone in any of those databases that you don't want them to be in because Facebook gets hacked. Um, YouTube gets hacked. All of these things get hacked. So for your new, sexy, clean and clear business address and business phone number, they have to be new to your business. And when you go ahead and get your business phone, register that phone in your business name, not your name, your business name. If you have to pay additional money and they usually don't charge that much, do it. If you have good credit, you will not even have to pay additional money. If you have an established EIN, you will not have to pay money. But this is very important because now we're getting to the first steps to credit awesomeness. And I'm going to explain why this verification thing is so important. Do not skip any of these steps. Do not. If you do it out of order, it will not work. Order your credit reports. If even, you know, if you get free credit reports, fine, but I spend the money and order a printed copy of your credit report. The printed copies of your credit report contain more information than the ones you get online. So you want a printed copy, spend the eight bucks per report, get them sent to your house. Now, after you get your credit reports, comb through them and then every address that you do not want on there, you challenge. You go ahead and challenge and you know, the slides are a little messed up, but I want you to challenge these addresses and let's see. Um, okay. When you get your credit reports, you don't even have to wait for your credit reports. 
you want all of your credit cards, all of your bank statements, anything credit related loans, you want all that going to the new address. Call up your credit card company and switch all of your credit cards, all of your car payments, your mortgage, everything to this new address. Everything. Now, if you have a mortgage, you can't remove that address. The mortgage company would trip a little bit. So you're going to have to leave that one on there. But even if you have a mortgage, still move everything to this new address, because if you sell your house, you lose that address, right? Where if you go ahead and establish this new address, you can get a mortgage, you can get credit cards, you can get car loans, you can get all kinds of stuff from that UPS address. Now, after you've ordered your credit reports, after you've called up all your creditors and switched to the new address, wait two months, 60 days, two months, 65 days, just to be sure. And then challenge all of the addresses that you don't want on there. You want to get rid of all those addresses and some of them might be a little tricky. You're going to have to come up with good reasons. We'll talk about it in the group, but you want to get all of those things off. Now, after you've done that, and while you're doing this, do not apply for any new credit. Do not open up a phone or nothing. You know, if you need to get a new phone, do that before you start this process. For about 60 to 90 days or longer, you're not going to apply for any new credit. Nothing. And that's pretty much the end of stage one because I want to keep these short and concise and it's about action steps. So tonight, go ahead order your credit reports, figure out where you're going to have this UPS box, figure out this number and start getting that stuff into play and get it into motion because the verification thing is going to weigh very large into getting business credit. I will tell you something that is new. Now I didn't put this slide up. I was thinking about it. Many banks are going to want you to have an internet address, they've got a database of all new addresses. And many banks will not open up your account unless you have a physical ad address that they can verify. So this is the trick to do with that. Since it's like a bank, a banking account, do not do a credit card. Do this first. If you're going to have a business checking account, business, whatever, give them some physical address, right? And once the account is open, switch it. I've done this because um, my bank was kind of tripping about that. So I just played their game then went in one day and like, hey, do, 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 do. and we switched it and we're good to go. So that's one of the ways to get around that and then move it towards your address. And then after a period of time, they, they won't care. So with that, I will see you in the group.